In ancient times, a cataclysmic conflict known as the Finno-Korean Hyperwar allegedly took place between the two most powerful empires of the era, the Proto-Finnic Holy Roman Khaganate and the Great Huan Empire. This war, which occurred thousands of years ago, supposedly resulted in the collapse of both empires and the near-total destruction of the world's population. According to some hypotheses, the Finnish and Korean empires may have been closely connected before the war, suggesting that the conflict could have been a large-scale civil war. Alternatively, the similarities between the two empires might have been a result of the massive territorial shifts caused by the war itself. Lore surrounding the events leading up to the Hyperwar describes the rise and fall of various ancient empires and civilizations, such as Atlantis, Hyberia, and the Emu Confederation. The Finnish and Huan empires are said to have enslaved Proto-Indo-Europeans and Neanderthals, while Semitic and Congolese states emerged in other regions. The war allegedly involved land, sea, air, and even space-based combat, with the Finnish Empire invading Mesopotamia and India to counter growing Huan influence. The Huan Empire in turn claimed Persia, India, and Mesopotamia for itself. Following the collapse of the Huan Empire, the Proto-Finnic Khaganate withdrew its soldiers from Asia to fight the quote, War on Autism, which ultimately consumed and collapsed the empire. Some believe that later conflicts, such as the wars between Rome and Parthia, the Crusades, and even World Wars I and II, were continuations of the Hyperwar. The Finno-Korean Hyperwar remains a subject of speculation and debate, with some linguists pointing to similarities between Uralic and Altaic languages as possible evidence of the conflict's impact on human history. In ancient Rome, a glassmaker supposedly invented a flexible glass that could bend without breaking and return to its original shape. According to legend, the glassmaker presented this remarkable creation to the Roman Emperor Tiberius. However, rather than rewarding the inventor, the emperor had the man executed and his workshop destroyed. Tiberius apparently feared that this unbreakable glass would devalue precious metals like gold and silver. While the story's truth remains uncertain, some speculate the Roman artisan may have added boric acid or borax to the glass mixture, which can create a more durable material. These substances were known to be used by ancient craftspeople. However, the exact recipe for this flexible Roman glass, if it ever truly existed, remains a mystery lost to history. Five U.S. Navy Avenger torpedo bombers, collectively known as Flight 19, mysteriously disappeared over the Bermuda Triangle during a routine navigation and combat training exercise in December 1945. The flight, consisting of an experienced leader and four trainee pilots, lost contact with the base after the flight leader reportedly became disoriented and believed they were over the Florida Keys, when in fact they were likely over the Bahamas. Radio communications between the pilots, overheard by other aircraft in the vicinity, revealed confusion about their location and a disagreement about which direction to fly to reach land. As the weather deteriorated and night fell, the flight leader made the decision to ditch the planes together when fuel ran low. A subsequent search and rescue mission launched a flying boat to locate Flight 19, but that aircraft also disappeared, with witnesses reporting flames from an apparent explosion at the plane's last known position. The Navy's investigation concluded that the flight leader had mistakenly led the squadron out to sea due to his belief that they were over the Gulf of Mexico and that the rescue plane was likely lost due to an explosion. However, the cause of the explosion was not determined, and the report was later amended to state the cause of the disappearances as unknown. Over the years, several expeditions have claimed to have found the wreckage of Flight 19 or other Avengers lost in the area, but none have been conclusively identified as the missing planes. Forest rings are large, circular patterns found in the boreal forests of northern regions like Canada, where the tree density is lower inside the ring compared to the denser ring of trees around the outer edge. These distinctive formations can range from around 50 meters to nearly 2 kilometers across, with the rim about 20 meters thick. Despite being visible from aerial surveys since the 1950s, the exact origin of how forest rings form remains unknown, though various hypotheses have been proposed. 
One early idea suggested a radially spreading fungus infection could kill interior trees first, allowing new growth in the center while the fungal mat formed the circular stunted ring. However, this hypothesis fell out of favor due to lack of evidence. Another proposal involves bacterial species like Geobacter potentially playing a role through their ability to transfer electrons in a circular pattern, increasing acidity and dissolving materials to create a depression ringed by denser growth. While the cause remains uncertain, forest rings represent an intriguing phenomenon found in certain northern forest scapes. With their large scale only apparent from above, they showcase one of nature's more visually striking and obscure landscape patterns. According to Cherokee legends, a mysterious group of people once inhabited the Appalachian region long ago. These people were described as having white skin, beards, and eyes that were sensitive to daylight, leading to them being called the Moon-Eyed People. Stories claim they built ancient ruins in the area before eventually being driven out by the Cherokee. The origins and true nature of the Moon-Eyed People are uncertain. Some accounts suggest they may have been indigenous tribes, while others propose they could have been early European explorers. Certain legends even link them to a Welsh prince who supposedly came to America centuries before Columbus. While the existence of the Moon-Eyed People remains a mystery, their legend has endured through the centuries in the folklore of the Cherokee and in the accounts of early American settlers who learned of these strange ancient inhabitants of the Appalachian Mountains. The scattered historical references to the Moon-Eyed People have kept alive the tantalizing possibility that an unknown race once called the region home in the distant past. Like this video and subscribe to Maker. Fractals, in mathematics, are geometric shapes with intricate patterns repeating at different scales. Unlike regular shapes, when you enlarge a fractal, its occupied space scales by a non-whole number factor described by its fractal dimension. These shapes often display self-similarity, with patterns recurring at varying scales, either exactly or approximately. Fractal geometry deals with these unique properties and patterns. Fractals possess peculiar traits like being nowhere differentiable, meaning their irregular, jagged structures make measuring their length or area challenging without infinite precision. The concept of fractals traces back centuries, with Benoit Mandelbrot coining the term in 1975. Fractals have evolved from early ideas of recursive patterns to modern computer-generated visualizations. They find applications in diverse fields such as art, computer graphics, physics, and biology. Fractals help model and understand complex natural phenomena like coastlines, clouds, blood vessels, and neuronal structures. A heroic Chicago firefighter named Frank Levy tragically lost his life along with several other firefighters battling a massive blaze at a dance hall in the 1920s. According to local legends, Levy had eerily leaned his hand on the window of the firehouse earlier that day, saying something foreboding about it being his last day on the job. The story goes that after Levy's death, his handprint mysteriously remained on that window, unable to be removed by any means until exactly 20 years later when a paperboy accidentally shattered the glass. This peculiar tale has become part of Chicago's ghost lore, told and retold over the decades. However, while Levy and the deadly fire were very real, there seems to be little evidence to support the handprint part of the story. No photographs exist of the supposed print, and the tale doesn't appear in records until long after the old firehouse had been torn down. So, the Levy handprint story is likely more folklore than fact, but its persistence over the years has transformed a fallen firefighter into a legendary figure, etching his name, heroism, and sacrifice into Chicago history. The tale, true or not, has made Levy an enduring symbol of the bravery of those who risk all to keep the city safe. A renowned Dutch-American primatologist and ethologist dedicated his career to studying primate social behavior, including conflict resolution, cooperation, and empathy. His groundbreaking work shed light on the complex emotional lives and cognitive abilities of our closest living relatives. 
early in his career, he conducted a multi-year study on a large captive chimpanzee colony, resulting in a seminal book that was the first to describe primate behavior in terms of planned social strategies. His research initially sparked controversy for attributing emotions and intentions to primates, but ultimately helped establish the field of primate cognition. Over the years, his work drew attention to behaviors like deception, conflict resolution, and empathy in primates. He introduced concepts that were initially met with skepticism, such as reconciliation after fights, but gradually gained acceptance. He also played a key role in popularizing bonobos and their make love, not war, reputation. Fundamentally, he aimed to understand the social glue that binds primate societies together. His studies led him to conclude that empathy and cooperation are shared by great apes and humans to varying degrees. He saw these traits as part of our evolutionary heritage, not unique to humans. In addition to his scientific work, he authored popular books relating insights from primate behavior to human society. He had a talent for making complex concepts accessible to a broad audience. Two of his final books became bestsellers, cementing his legacy as both a pioneering researcher and gifted science communicator. Sadly, he passed away from cancer at the age of 75, leaving behind an immense contribution to our understanding of primates, including ourselves. His work will continue to shape the field and inspire new generations of scientists to explore the depths of the animal mind. Freemasonry is a fraternal organization that traces its origins back to the local guilds of stonemasons in the 14th century. It's the world's largest and oldest non-religious, non-political, fraternal, and charitable organization. Freemasonry evolved from the guilds of stonemasons and cathedral builders of the Middle Ages. With the decline of cathedral building, some guilds of stonemasons began to accept honorary members to boost their declining membership. From a few of these guilds emerged modern symbolic or speculative Freemasonry, which particularly in the 17th and 18th centuries adopted the rites and trappings of ancient religious orders and of chivalric brotherhoods. In 1717, the first Grand Lodge was founded in London. This marked the beginning of the modern Masonic era and the standardization of the ritual. The Freemasons are organized into independent and sovereign Grand Lodges. A Grand Lodge governs the individual or subordinate Masonic Lodges within its jurisdiction. There is no single overarching governing body that presides over worldwide Freemasonry. Within the fraternity, members are taught its precepts by a series of ritual dramas that follow ancient forms and use stonemasons customs and tools as allegorical guides. These rituals take the form of degree ceremonies which dramatically depict a progression of allegorical two-part plays. The essential principles of Freemasonry are brotherly love, relief, and truth. Its symbolic emblems include the square and compass, the trowel, the rough and trued ashlars, the pyramid, and the globe. It has its own myths, allegories, and legends. Much of the content of its ceremonies and lectures is derived from the Old and New Testaments, and its aims and principles are essentially Christian. Over the years, Freemasons have been accused of everything from controlling the world to engaging in occult practices. But in reality, Freemasonry is a fraternal organization dedicated to philanthropic and educational purposes. Some of the most famous Freemasons include George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and Winston Churchill. Despite facing occasional opposition and conspiracy theories over the centuries, Freemasonry has continued to thrive and remain an influential and intriguing part of society. Its symbols and rituals have captured imaginations, while its commitment to brotherhood and charitable causes have earned respect. The fraternity's longevity and past roster of luminaries has only added to its mystique. For those both inside and outside the order, Freemasonry remains a source of fascination. A centuries-old society with legendary roots, arcane rites, and profound global influence. Viral videos of a mysterious creature dubbed the Fresno Nightcrawler have captured the imagination of the internet and spawned a modern folklore legend. The story began when a Fresno resident shared eerie surveillance footage from his front lawn, showing what appeared to be a pair of walking pants with no visible upper body. Another video a few years later captured similar pale figures with long, spindly legs wandering through a community near Yosemite National Park. 
These strange clips quickly spread online, sparking rampant speculation and debate about what has come to be known as the Fresno Nightcrawler. Over time, the Nightcrawler has joined the ranks of other famous cryptids like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster, animals whose existence is claimed but unproven. But what makes the Nightcrawler unique is its humble origins in these specific videos and its rapid rise to internet fame. Artists worldwide have embraced the Fresno Nightcrawler, creating their own interpretations ranging from the creepy to the cute. Photorealistic images blend the creature into historical photos. Quirky illustrations adorn stickers and keychains. The Nightcrawler's simple, almost silly appearance lends itself well to merchandising. Beyond the visuals, the Nightcrawler has also become a muse for storytellers. Because the videos merely show the creatures innocently lurking in the night, there's ample room for playful tales rather than just terror. Podcasters have delved into the legend, even touring with comedy shows devoted to the cryptid. Locally, Fresnans have taken pride in their native Nightcrawler. It's been the star of art shows and the theme of Halloween displays. Some even prefer being known for this quirky creature than for some of the region's less savory claims to fame. So while the Fresno Nightcrawler's reality remains a mystery, its place in pop culture is firmly established. This bizarre beast, whatever it is, has truly captured the world's imagination, one stilted step at a time. In the late 19th century, the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche introduced several concepts that would later be reflected in the psychoanalytic theories of Sigmund Freud. Despite Freud's claims to the contrary, there is evidence he was familiar with Nietzsche's works and integrated some of the philosopher's ideas into his own psychological framework. Nietzsche and Freud both explored the concept of the unconscious mind, the notion that repressed thoughts and feelings continue to influence us even when we are unaware of them. They believed this repression serves a protective function, making individuals more emotionally comfortable and high-functioning by pushing unacceptable ideas out of conscious awareness. However, these repressed drives later find disguised outlets, such as altruistic acts, masking unconscious hostile feelings. The two thinkers also drew parallels between dreams and the unconscious. They saw dreams as complex symbolic illusions that offer a cathartic, healthy release for our hidden emotions and instincts. Nietzsche and Freud further connected unconscious drives to psychological conditions like paranoia, suggesting that projection of hostile feelings can lead individuals to perceive others as persecutors. Beyond these conceptual similarities, Freud used some of the same terminology as Nietzsche, hinting at a direct influence. Despite Freud's adamant disavowal of ever reading Nietzsche, references to the philosopher appear in Freud's writings, letters, and secondhand reports of his conversations. While Freud would go on to become a monumental figure in the field of psychology, it seems Nietzsche's philosophical musings on the inner workings of the human mind paved the way for some of Freud's revolutionary ideas about the unconscious roots of behavior and mental illness. Scientists are exploring the feasibility of building a massive new particle accelerator that would dramatically exceed the capabilities of any previous circular collider, including the famous Large Hadron Collider. This enormous machine, dubbed the Future Circular Collider, would smash together particles at unprecedented energies in the hopes of unlocking the deepest secrets of the universe. The proposed accelerator would be housed in a sprawling underground tunnel, stretching up to 100 kilometers in circumference. This tunnel would dwarf the current 27-kilometer loop that houses the Large Hadron Collider, which itself is a marvel of modern engineering. Inside this vast subterranean ring, beams of protons would race around in opposite directions, propelled to astronomical speeds by cutting-edge technologies. When the beams collide, the total energy released would be orders of magnitude greater than anything achieved by the LHC, opening up entirely new frontiers in particle physics. Scientists believe this jump in power could shed light on some of the most perplexing mysteries in physics today. It may reveal the nature of dark matter, help explain the imbalance between matter and antimatter in the universe, and even provide clues about how the fundamental forces of nature unite at extremely high energies. But realizing this ambitious vision will require overcoming immense technological challenges. 
In a vast dust cloud at the heart of the Milky Way galaxy, astronomers have discovered a rather unusual molecule, ethyl formate. This chemical compound is responsible for giving raspberries their distinctive flavor and aroma. Oddly enough, ethyl formate is also known for its rum-like scent. While scouring through thousands of signals from this interstellar cloud, known as Sagittarius B2, researchers were hoping to find evidence of amino acids, the building blocks of life. Although they didn't detect any amino acids this time around, the discovery of ethyl formate and another molecule called propyl cyanide has boosted their confidence that these vital compounds could be found in the coming years. The molecules were spotted using a powerful radio telescope that analyzed the radiation emitted by the dust cloud surrounding a newborn star. Different molecules absorb and re-emit this radiation at specific energies, allowing astronomers to identify them from afar. So far, the team has identified around 50 unique molecules in their cosmic survey, with many more waiting to be analyzed. These complex molecules are thought to form when simpler compounds like ethanol link together on the surface of dust grains floating in space. As researchers continue to sift through the data, the prospect of finding the elusive amino acids that could seed life on other planets remains an exciting possibility. While we may not be able to harvest space raspberries anytime soon, the detection of increasingly complex organic molecules in deep space brings us one step closer to understanding the origins of life in the universe. In the early 20th century, an unconventional thinker named William Danmar developed a peculiar theory he dubbed Galomalism. At the heart of this esoteric concept lies the Galom, which Danmar defined as the fundamental essence of mass and the ever-present product of two opposing tendencies, one driving matter into existence, the other resisting this materialization. According to Danmar, by grasping the principles of Galomalism and its mathematical representation, which he termed contravaxantism, one could unlock a complete understanding of the universe. He claimed that every substance contains spantums, which, when chipped or shaved, give rise to color. Danmar also introduced an array of quirky terminology, such as the chemograph, temperatometer, chemicature, and xeron, the latter referring to organic substances near the so-called zero of nature or point of death. Perhaps the most bizarre aspect of Danmar's theory was his nervonology, a supposed science of death that purportedly proved the existence of ghosts. He even went so far as to locate these spectral entities in the tail of the Earth, providing a diagram oriented to the latitude of New York City. Contemporary reviewers of Danmar's work were understandably skeptical, with one describing his ideas as a new budget of paradoxes. Despite the outlandish nature of his claims, Danmar's galomalism serves as a fascinating example of the human mind's capacity for conjuring up unorthodox explanations for the mysteries of the universe, no matter how far-fetched they may seem. The Gansfeld effect is a peculiar phenomenon that occurs when you undergo sensory deprivation for an extended period. By blocking out all external stimuli, your brain tries to make sense of the lack of information, often leading to vivid visual and auditory hallucinations. To experience the Gansfeld effect, your entire field of vision must be filled with a uniform color, free from any changes in brightness, movement, or depth. This is typically achieved by placing halved ping pong balls over your eyes or wearing a specially designed paper mask. The room should be illuminated with a single color of light, usually red, and you'll listen to white noise to minimize auditory disturbances. Within minutes of this sensory deprivation, your perception begins to shift. You may notice a gradual dimming of the light, even though it remains constant. Colors may appear to change or fade, and you might see eye tracers or blood vessels. Prolonged exposure can lead to more vivid hallucinations, similar to those induced by certain drugs. While generally safe, the Gansfeld experiment can be unsettling, causing disorientation and confusion. Those with mental health conditions like schizophrenia may find the experience particularly negative. Parapsychologists have long used the Gansfeld experiment to investigate the possibility of extrasensory perception, or the sixth sense. In these studies, 
a receiver undergoes the sensory deprivation while a sender in another room focuses on a target image. If the receiver's hallucinations match the target, it's considered a success. However, the scientific community remains skeptical due to inconsistencies and methodological issues in these studies. Ultimately, the Gansfeld effect demonstrates the brain's remarkable ability to generate perceptual experiences in the absence of external stimuli. It induces an altered state of consciousness, blurring the line between wakefulness and sleep, and potentially offering a glimpse into the mind's inner workings. Gaslighting is a devious form of psychological manipulation that can occur in both personal and professional relationships. Victims of gaslighting are fed a steady stream of false information, leading them to question their own perceptions, memories, and even their sanity. The term gaslighting comes from an old play and movie, where a manipulative husband slowly convinces his wife that she's going insane. In real life, gaslighters often have narcissistic or psychopathic personality traits. They lie, twist reality, and undermine their victim's sense of self to gain control over them. Gaslighting often starts subtly, with small lies and inconsistencies. The manipulator may shower their target with affection and confide in them early on, a tactic known as love bombing. But as the relationship progresses, the gaslighter's distortions grow more complex and potent. They may deny things they've said, question the victim's recollection of events, and even recruit others to back up their version of reality. Over time, the constant doubt and manipulation can erode the victim's self-esteem and ability to trust their own judgment. They may start to blame themselves, wondering if they're too sensitive or truly losing their grip on reality. When a victim tries to break free, the gaslighter often turns on the charm, promising to change and lavishing them with praise, a manipulative ploy called hoovering named after the vacuum cleaner. But once the victim lets their guard down, the cycle of abuse continues. The psychological effects of gaslighting can be devastating, shattering the victim's trust in themselves and others. Escaping a gaslighter's influence is rarely easy, but it is possible with support and a firm grasp on one's own truth. Recognizing the signs of manipulation is the first step in breaking free from the twisted reality the gaslighter has created. According to voodoo tradition, the souls of the dead reside in a murky realm of the underworld known as Guinea. This plane serves not as a place of punishment, but rather a transitional space spirits must navigate before reaching the deep waters, where they reunite with their ancestors. Presiding over Guinea is the powerful Loa, or spirit, Baron Samidi, often depicted as a top hat-wearing skeleton. He guards the crossroads that serve as portals to other worlds, the most significant being the seven gates of Guinea. Interpretations of these gates vary among voodoo practitioners. Some view them as metaphorical, representing the seven days following death when the soul remains close to the body and vulnerable to being zombified by hoodoo magic. During this period, the soul passes through each gate, meeting Baron Samidi at the seventh before being escorted to the land of the dead. Others believe the gates have earthly counterparts scattered throughout the cemeteries of New Orleans' French Quarter. The area was once home to numerous burial grounds, making it a veritable city of the dead. Specific tombs and monuments, such as that of famed voodoo priestess Marie Laveau, are thought to mark the locations of these portals. Opening the gates in the correct order is crucial, lest dangerous spirits be unleashed or the seeker be dragged into the underworld. A traditional voodoo rhyme is said to reveal the proper timing. Seven nights, seven moons, seven gates, seven tombs. Each gate is guarded by a powerful low who must be appeased with ritual offerings. The seven guinea gateways are believed to be most active on certain holidays, such as Christmas, Mardi Gras, and All Saints Day, making them easier to open. But those seeking to enter the realm of the dead must tread carefully, respecting the guardians and the mysteries that lie beyond the gates of guinea.